In one of my Pro Tailwind workshops, we build a multi-theme strategy that leverages CSS variables and the Tailwind plugin API. So you can see for this calendar app on the top right, we have this theme switcher and we can pick rain, forest or candy and it completely changes the whole theming of the application. I want to follow up on this with a pretty cool case study that directly relates to the workshop. I'm talking about Feather.so, a SaaS app that lets you turn a Notion database into a blog in a few minutes. Feather was created by Banu, you can see his Twitter profile here, and you may know Banu from another project, SiteGPT, which got pretty popular recently. So Banu attended the original live Zoom workshop that I delivered for the multi-theme strategy and almost immediately after the workshop mentioned that he was going to try implement his learning into Feather.so. Only a few days after that, I noticed that Feather had rolled out a color theme picker in production. So I wanted to do a little follow up on this. I've reached out to Banu and sure enough, he was happy for me to make a video on this. So let's take a look. This is Feather. As I mentioned, it's a service that lets you turn a Notion database into a blog. And so I've already created an account, so I'm going to log in. All right, I'm in. And you can see that I have one site here. So let's go check out the blog dashboard. Really quickly, let me show you how it works. So I have my content here and all these posts here actually come from a Notion database. I've used the demo starter that Feather proposes to you. So if I go in content, it's just a typical Notion database with different fields that are mapped into the system. These posts are just displayed here, but you can see if I want to edit, it actually invites me to go edit that in Notion. So there's a series of custom fields that you can define. And then the main page body is the blog post body copy. Let's go back to our dashboard and actually take a look at a blog. So that's what it looks like with an out of the box template uh, that looks really nice. And you can drill down to the post, which is the one we just looked at in the Notion database. Pretty cool. All right, so now, and this is where it gets interesting and relevant, let's go to this design tab here. So you can choose between different blog templates. We're using the SaaS template here. You can choose between light, dark or system mode. And then look at this, we have a blog theme section where you can select a color theme. So right now we're using the candy theme and you may have noticed on the website that we have this primary color of pink. And if we switch this to rainforest and let's go down and hit save. If I refresh the website now, we are using the rainforest theme. And as you may have guessed it, this is what I want to show you because this is a real world application of the learnings from the Pro Tailwind workshop. Now, if you've taken the workshop, you remember the approach that we've taken where we set root level CSS variable for the default colors and then create theme scopes where we redefine the colors for each theme. Well, let's open the dev tools and see what's happening in here. All right, let's inspect one of these elements that has the primary color. And if we scroll down a bit here, you can see we have text primary 800 and BG primary 100. Those are using CSS variable. And if I drill down to find out about them, aha, you can see we have our root variables from primary 50 to 900. And then these are redefined in a data theme equals rainforest scope, precisely like we did in the workshop. So when we selected the rainforest theme here in the settings, it probably saved somewhere on the body or the HTML tag. Yep, here it is, data theme, rainforest. So it sets the scope of the entire website to be this rainforest theme. And let's actually try to switch that back to candy. And of course, the theme has been updated once again. And remember, the scopes are nestable. So if I was to select just this one card here, and let's add a data theme equals rainforest just to that one, now we've created this nested scope within this div. So only this card inherits the colors from the rainforest theme where the entirety of the rest of the site remains candy. Besides the default themes, Banu has also rolled out a custom theme generator. So you can see a few suggestions, but you can basically pick the 500 shade as the primary color. You can use a color picker for that. Let's go with something very aqua-y like that. You can see it's suggesting the turquoise name, which is fine. And it's auto generated the shades from 50 to 400 and 600 to 900 automatically. So let's save that. And now I can select my new turquoise color theme. And we can see that new color theme in action. You can see this time we've generated a unique hash for the theme name. 
And this is how the scope is created and the variables are redefined. And if you wonder how this custom color spread generator was implemented, speaking to Banu, it turns out it's heavily inspired by this shades generator tool for Tailwind CSS, a tool created by Alex Gleason. And this tool is open source. If you want to check out the code, it's called Tailwind Color Shades. So shout out to Alex for this. And also, most definitely, shout out to Alex's personal website because it looks pretty cool. All right, so in my Pro Tailwind workshop, we stuck to only defining colors as part of theming strategy. But you may have noticed that in Feather, there was something else in the root scope CSS variable definition. If I go back to my blog and look at the CSS variable definition uh, for the theme scope and the root scope, you can see we have this CTA button radius property as well, which is not a color, but a border radius, I guess, value. So let's see what options we have. We have the color theme and also a shade of gray theme, which is pretty nice. And here we have font families and button styles for border radiuses. That might be it. So let's try change to rounded. And now when I refresh the page, I fully expect this button to be rounded. And yep, that's the case. And if I scroll down, I imagine this is the case for all buttons in the website. So we've tackled another aspect of theming here with border radiuses. And you can imagine the same happening with shadows, font sizes, and a lot of things. And as you've seen a hint with the CSS variable declaration, the implementation is likely going to be exactly the same. Set up a CSS variable value at the root scope and then redefine that value. So let's inspect this button and figure out where the rounded class is coming. And I have here this rounded CTA button radius, which is applying this CSS variable CTA button radius that we've seen defined at the root scope. So if I click on this, aha, here we simply redefine the root variable. So I imagine this comes later in the CSS file declaration. So the cascade does its thing and this one prevails. So if you remember the original value of root was right here, 0.5 rem. And then we redefine the same root selector, but like I said, probably later in the CSS or maybe in the HTML after the style sheet, just to make sure this one wins. So let's click here. And yeah, there you go. You can see there's a style tag that I imagine comes after the Tailwind CSS file. And here we define this value. So if I was to change that to zero rem, we'll have absolutely square sharp buttons. If I change this to pixels, you can see that it actually updates in real time as I move up and down the value. And I'm not going to show you this, but you best believe that the same happens with the heading fonts and content fonts. We have CSS variables to define which font families to use, and then we redefine this based on the selection in the settings. And there you have it. It made me really happy to see the contents of my Pro Tailwind workshop directly translate to a real world project like Feather. And honestly, the fact that the first iteration of this theme picker feature was rolled out less than a week after the live workshop, that was pretty amazing to witness. I want my workshops to unleash actionable outcomes and immediately applicable new skills. And this is exactly what happened here. All right, that's it for this video. If the idea of maintaining a blog through Notion seems appealing to you, definitely check out feather.so. It's really good and incredibly easy to get set up. And if you want to do a deep dive into how to build a multi-theme strategy plugin with Tailwind CSS, head over to protailwind.com. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.